way to Calvert to pick up our, I guess, Caltrack bars and the leaf springs. So, we'll see what goes on over there. I may or may not film, but that's what we're doing. Still waiting on stuff from Funkhauser. Was kind of hoping that I would have that already, but um, I guess it just hasn't shipped yet. I know he's getting ready to move, so he might be busy doing that, but go get this stuff picked up and then probably go back to the house and work on the bird for a little while. I messed around with it a little bit last night and the um, frame is going to have to be cut a lot in the back. There's just no room. I, I'm able to get the wheel and tire in there somewhat, but it's going to have to be cut quite a bit to get it in there comfortably. And it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get the freaking thing, the tire out when I wanna change tires. So I've been brainstorming on how, what I'm gonna do. I really kinda was wanting the Funkhauser stuff to be here, that way I could start mocking stuff up and see where I can cut and add to the back side of the frame. But uh, nonetheless, you guys will see everything I do, so. All right, you guys, it's Saturday the 5th. I didn't film anything at Calvert. Started talking to John. Been buying parts from him since I was like 16. So just kind of BS with him, but picked up everything. Springs, um, the bars, all that stuff. I'll show you in a second. Uh, still waiting on my Funkhauser stuff. Supposed to be here today on UPS. So once that gets here, I'll be able to, I guess, check it out and show you guys. But let me show you what I've worked on without filming. All right, so I've cut this, this back, everything, the metal back to the frame. But I'm gonna have to cut literally all the way to where there's only about a half inch of frame left. I'm, I think I'm gonna plate the other side, the inside of the frame. And then I'll weld a, an eighth inch piece back in here and I'm going to dimple dye it and then I'm going to drill holes every so often and I'll take that dimple die and go through the plate and then I'll weld a piece of round tube so that it'll be strong you know this way and then once I do my anti-roll bar bar and shock bar I will go all the way through this kind of like you've seen on trucks how they'll have a hole here and they'll run a thing all the way through to make the frame strong, I'm gonna do the same thing here. So when the anti-roll bar, wherever that ends up, I gotta get the rear end in it and figure that out. <clears throat> but where the anti-roll bar is going to attach, you know, I will drill a big hole, um, depending on what size two we go with. Kelly, Black GT is supposed to come over here and I was gonna ask him what he thought. But we'll run a tube all the way across and I'm talking all the way through and then I, I will be able to weld it on this side, on the inside and then same over there, over there. Same with the shock mount. When the shock uh, bar goes across, I'm gonna do the same thing and that should keep everything back here pretty pretty stiff. Despite the frame only going down to about a half inch. And uh, Jacob Fox or J Fox on Instagram, I'll drop a link or I'll drop his Instagram name. I've asked him a million questions and then 63 uh, Turbo Falcon, he's building one of these, um, it's LS swapped. Um, I picked both of their brains, both had to do the exact same thing to be able to get the type of tire that that you need to get in here. I can actually get the wheel and tire in here, but it's touching, you know, it's touching uh, everything. It's touching the, the fender well on the outside of the car and then on the inside. So that's just what I got to do to be able to get the tire in here that I want. And then once I get all this stuff cut out, gusseted and... Um, put back together then I guess we can get the wheels kind of sat in here and then I can figure out how wide the rim needs to be um I was going to just put the sprint just basically move it from here to there but I gotta see uh, where I'm gonna end up back here with the slider before I decide what I'm doing up front I may need to make my own little front boxes like the Kreitz and weld them and just weld them in. I may need to do something like that so that the uh, slider in the back 
will work with this Funkhauser bracket. Hopefully the slider's not so far in that I have to change something else. So it's a big guessing game back here to get it the way it needs to be, but I'll get it. I'm getting ready to cut this other stuff out on the other side. So I got the passenger side one cut out and then I'm getting ready to do the, the driver. I've already got that uh, inner wheelhouse out. But I'm basically going to cut over to where the frame is. Um, and I've drilled holes. You can see like every, I don't know, three or four inches. And I'll mark that with a Sharpie. And then I'll just cut it from up here. Um, with the DA wheel. And then I will have to cut it again. When the frame is been cut down real thin, I'll have to cut it again. But um i'm just trying to take my time and and measure and not get too carried away too fast that i don't screw anything up but that's what i got going on and uh when the fun calendar stuff shows up i'll unbox that let me show you the, the calvert stuff so these are the the leaves i went with one inch lower and then everything else is kind of dropped down in this box the bars blah 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 um these go underneath the lease springs these are the purchase for the rear end so i got all that stuff here i'm just waiting on uh, the other stuff to get in and slowly but surely is how this is gonna go in the back because i'm new at that stuff so may put you on a time lapse while i cut that out maybe not i don't know phone's kind of low on battery so i was gonna let it charge uh, but I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right, everybody. It's Sunday, March the 6th. And I got my stuff from Funkhauser. Really, really, really nice stuff. Uh, I unboxed it. And I didn't even video. I just unboxed it. Uh, these are the sliders. Really clean. Really nice. <clears throat> so I unboxed it and uh, just kind of started working on stuff and um been looking at stuff so i'll kind of show you what i have going now remember this kit is for a for a nova 2 it's not for a ford so there's gonna have to be some modifications to a few things but that's okay and i'll show you what we got so far so all right first of all that that's their box stout 316s box uh, p and o metal uh, but you can see there's a gap in here and i believe calvert makes um shims so that this it'll push the spring and center it in the box but i'm trying to keep this spring as as far that way as i can just because obviously you can tell the gas tank is gonna need to be modified a little bit right here maybe um problem i'm having is trying to get the spring straight in the back these Fords, the way the, the rear frame is, um, they kick out and blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to get that straight. And I've got something rigged up here that I've used that I think is going to work or that should work to get the spring straight. Let me show you. So my spring box is basically going to be on this side of the frame. And then once I get it everywhere that I want it, I'm going to go ahead and weld it to here. And I have to do that because... Um, that's about a half inch of frame that's going to be left. I may even have to trim this sucker more. I'm not sure yet. But if I put the spring box right there in the front, that should give me room to get the tire in. I mean, it, it'll it be very close as you can see, but that should give me room to get my tire in. Uh, so the problem that I'm having is this frame, you know, it, it does all this weird wonky stuff to the back. So you can't just put this stuff in and bolt it to it like you could on the Chevy 2 like Funkhauser does because the springs aren't straight. So I've taken this laser, kind of clamped it to it. I've measured this distance here. It's 750 thousandths. I turn the laser on and it marks me back here on the frame, but it's 750 thousandths too far this way number one and number two that spring box is three sixteenths of an inch so sorry for the the bright light but i've basically marked 
where things need to go. And then I set that box up here. Let me see if I can get it on camera. All right, I didn't film, but we got, we got this where it needs to be. I'm gonna have to weld some more metal up here to catch this. But we got this where it needs to be. A new holes drilled in that. Now I'm working on the box. I've got it cut down so that it's now a three inch box. And I'm gonna get the TIG welder out. I've got a piece bolted in there. I'm gonna get the TIG welder out. I'll get it tacked and then I'm gonna try to weld this up. you guys I got the boxes in there and got all this kind of mocked up these damn leaf springs are like they feel like they're twisted like they, they want to twist a certain way so I'm not sure if that's normal before I buzz anything in I'm gonna wait and talk to John at Calvert you know see how you can see this is kind of and we'll see make sure that I got this in here correct uh, now I'm gonna move on to cutting this out. Uh, there's no sense in even tacking any of this anyways until I know if when I cut this out, the tire's gonna fit. So I'm gonna move on to this. I'm gonna pull the Caltrex down so that there's just less weight right here while I'm working. And I'm gonna cut that out on both sides. And then I'll lower the car down and see uh, where the tire looks like it's gonna be the closest to hitting. I've lowered the car onto the wheel <clears throat> and I can get it in there now with, there's a little more room. However, if you look in here, like I say, this, this frame rail comes this way and you could see like it's not touching right here. I've got room right there, but it is touching the lower. It is touching the lower portion of the frame in there. 
you can see here it's very close to hard to see in there really thinking I'm just gonna make a mark at this seam up here and I'm just gonna come straight back where the frame is and just be done with it I'm really thinking I'm gonna do that so that I got room and that's what it looks like this is probably really close to right height I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this needs to come back or what just depends where the leaf springs land and I can also I can also have the pins and the leaf springs moved where it'll give me more clearance but uh I mean it looks really good it just I'm really thinking I'm just gonna go down to nothing and I was gonna use <clears throat> I know I've said all kinds of stuff but I was going to use that 14 gauge cold roll that I had but I'm really thinking about just eighth inch plate on the inside, 3 16 plate on the back side, be done with it. All right, you guys, it's Tuesday the 8th. I'm out here in the shop getting the spring boxes all squared up and tacked, tacked into the frame. Um, and then I'm gonna reshoot where the these rear brackets go for the sliders with the laser. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I already got one squared up and tacked. Now I've got to get this other one squared up and tacked. And when I say squared up and tacked, I mean on one side, uh, you know, the bottom needs to be away from the frame a little bit. And on the other side, it's the top. So, you know, this is not precision stuff back then, I guess. So I'm getting that all to where it's squared up and then we'll re-pull to the back. Uh, make sure I have these springs right. I think I said earlier that it seemed like the spring was twisted because when the bolt was going through the box, it wasn't correct. It wasn't level and the box wasn't level. I didn't have the right bolts. This thing, uh, the Funkhauser kit came with uh, 9 16 holes for 9 16 bolts. And I think I was mocking this up with half inch. So there was a lot of wiggle room, even when it was tight. I've eliminated all that now with getting the right bolts and I'll have these things all tacked in level and right and square and that should make getting the back done a lot easier. Man, this is a chopped up video, but as you see, Merle came by and we kind of were looking at um, getting these springs straight and the boxes back here level and the front ones level and square. And sometimes it's good to have another set of eyes on that stuff. So I know what I've got to do uh, pretty much just need to do, you know, we kind of went over some stuff and just need to get it done. Um, may or may not time lapse it. This is just boring stuff, you guys. Cutting out the... Uh, braces where the shock went, the shocks went, um, cutting out the frame. It's just, it's boring, boring stuff. So pr probably we'll catch up with you uh, when I got a little more leeway. Um, I'm gonna cut this damn thing in half. I don't know if I've already said this or not, but I'm gonna cut this in half. And that's gonna, I'm gonna build the frame on the inside. I have lost all of the frame on the inside to fit that uh, 275 radio pro. I've, I gotta lose all of this to get that in here comfortably. Merle and I set the um, perches in here and put a pipe and then centered the wheel. And it the wheel actually looks like it's gonna be okay. Um, the front portion of the, of the rear fender opening may need to be massaged a little bit, but I'll address that a little bit later. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that square piece of tube. So this is my pattern. I'll basically cut that piece of tube in half so it's gonna be a U channel. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll get my measurements out and then I'll, I'll take that tube and I'll, I'll start making cuts um, in that tube so that I can 
bend it this way and then I'll make cuts in the tube on the other side and I'll bend it that way. And essentially what I will do is I will completely mimic this entire pattern. I will probably come down starting, you know, somewhere in here and then maybe like an angle gusset, but that, that U channel will go all the way up and I will probably bring it all the way back to the, uh, this extended extension piece here. And like I've told you guys before, um, there will get a inch and five eighths hole and I will run a bar all the way across. We'll build the anti-roll bar off of that. And then we will also put another hole, go across. We will run, that'll be where the shocks connect. And then sporadically throughout this little portion of Zing the frame, if that's what you want to call it, I will take a one inch piece every so often. I'll drill through the frame and I'll take a piece of one inch, probably chrome molly or DOM, and I'll uh, weld it and then weld it on the other side and that'll keep this whole thing stout. I don't know if I've already explained this or not. Um, that's what I'll do. We ain't gonna have no problems. And beside all that, once the cage gets done back here, um, we can tie into the bar that goes across that we're gonna build an anti-roll bar off of. Um, and tie that to the cage, you know, the bars that come down in the back, we can tie that in and we ain't gonna have any problems. The only thing, you know, now is let's just get this stuff built and back in. I ain't seen no movement back here at all when I've been cutting this stuff out. Like, um, I thought I would, I thought it would be kind of shaky, but I guess I'll get one side built and kind of tacked in and then I'll probably get the other side cut out and get that done. I'll do one side at a time so that I'm not um, weakening this, weakening this thing up too much. Um, so when I can, I'll time lapse, but uh, kind of boring stuff, you guys. So, you know, if I lose some view viewership uh, from this, I understand. <laughs> All right, you guys, this video's jumped around a lot, but you see me cut the this channel in half, and now I'm gonna get up on a bench, I'm gonna start laying it out. I believe this is called bending something the hard way, but I'm just gonna start slicing this sucker until I can get it to bend. Um, no, no real science to this, so just stay tuned and we'll see if it works. let me explain what's going on so basically this will be the top of the frame and we got to pay attention where we cut because we want we want this to all stay basically like this and then when we start bending the other way you know we'll cut from the bottom so that um, it'll make sense when I get laying it out but basically I've got these laid out every half inch and I'm just gonna start cutting at the end, I'll be able to count and the next one will go quicker, but I'm sure there's a mathematical way to do this, but I'm not good at math unless it comes to spending money. So I'm just gonna cut all these until I can get this channel to do what I want it to do, you know, start bending up. And I'm gonna use this as my template to kind of stay with. And then once this thing is up there, I can start tacking and blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, uh, this frame is not level. So this method is gonna work out pretty good. And I will just cut this with the chop saw. It takes forever, but that's what we gotta do. All right, got a bunch of cuts and I think I might be very close, but I'm gonna have to cut on the backside. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here. So I've got this to where 
real good there. Hard to do with one hand. But... Let me tack some stuff up and I'll show you guys. This is very hard to do with one hand, but at any rate, I need to get some of them pie cuts tacked and then I need to cut some on the back side because stop though. Well, this frame does one of those things, so. All right, you guys, this is what I've got. I've got it clamped in here, probably as close as I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna run some tacks on this so it don't move and then I'll get it up in the car. And we'll check the fitment. I wanna get one side in, at least tacked in, before I cut the other side apart. And then I'll cut the other side apart, do the same thing. So you may miss some of this. This is, this is like been probably one of the most tedious parts and hardest parts to film for this car is fig figuring all this stuff out. And this stuff's just boring, so. Um, you can only listen to music and time lapse for so long, but I'm gonna get this thing tacked up and then we'll check it in the car. All right, you guys, uh, I got this this one tacked and I'm just burning it in. So, you know, that's what I'm gonna do on the other side. Probably won't film, but uh, that'll do it for this video. Sorry, it kind of jumped around and, and it's all over the place, but kind of you're seeing me figure out what the heck's going on. Um, I'll show you real quick. I got some of this stuff welded up and you know, that, that frame, whatever's in that frame, makes a nice pretty blue color when you're welding but it's just hard to get shit stuck to it. Uh, even with it clean with a wire wheel or even when I clean it with a flapper wheel, it's like the same difference. But uh, I can tell you right now that just adding this one little piece is far stouter than the two, than the original frame that was in here. Um, and then I may plate the backside where I cut out towards where the wheel goes. I don't really want to do that because I want all the, the area I can get, but I think I may, uh, Put a piece of plate up there and maybe not completely weld it in like i am this frame just a couple of little uh, stitch welds here and there and be done with it so you know out here really tough to get it to attach to that existing frame just really thin and then on the inside here is as, as you've seen from the time lapse i'm just going slowly and getting this burned in and then when i'm done i'll take the flapper wheel probably to it and uh, clean it all up and you guys will know because you've been watching on YouTube, but when somebody gets underneath it, they may or may not catch it. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.